Wagwan, Wagwan, what's great? Chef here, John Morris again, man, presenting to you how to make my Jamaican Russia fake breakfast. We know about sardines, mackerel, chicken neck, chicken back. No on our waist, no on our dash way. Russia fake. I want that. Now some fire up sitting me see up on the channel and talk about Russia fake. You get three. So you see, if you never know, you click on the thumbnail and come over here if you beat me bad. Russia fake means leftovers. Yeah, man. I saw the French them going like them fancy, but we got the French them still because they don't know majority of the cooking techniques and all these things come from the French. So we have to love and respect them. Big them up, you see me? No, no, we no, no, that's right. The internet they just accidentally, you know. Teacher never seen that accidentally, you know. You feel me, I say? And the rice and peas never warm up on Monday accidentally, you know. But Russia fee, as I said before, means leftovers. And what we say leftovers in a Jamaica, you know, we are talking about Sunday, Monday, and we are talking about some rice and peas hot up on Monday. Nothing not so nice, so. You know the thing, girl. Uh, you have some dump now, you have leftover, mommy cook too much food. She never really cook too much food, you know. She never want to cook nothing more for breakfast, I man, because she wants to say, I got love when she fire up the dumpling and the yam and the variety of stuff that you can eat with this are endless. But guess what? I'm going to show you how to refry your dumplings and your yam. I'm going to cook that up with some frankfurter. You call it hot dog for my international friends. And of course, the frankfurter cooked down in an exotic tomato sauce with vegetables. So we don't forget the delay. Forward, let me show you how I go on. So if you're a low income family, don't worry yourself. I'm gonna show you how I go on because we know that's something they're going to understand. I'm gonna show you how I transform these three into a delicious meal. To get the best out of my francs, I'm gonna cut those on a slant. Nice about quarter inch or so. Gonna need of course some scotch bonnet peppers. Some nice fresh thyme, white onion cut into julienne strips, and of course green, red, and yellow peppers as well as some tomatoes. And then we're going to use some garlic puree, all-purpose seasoning, and some ketchup. So we're going to start off by heating up our pan. We're going to heat that pan with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I'm going to go in with two slices of my scotch bonnet pepper, half white onion, we have a quarter of each bell pepper, red, green and yellow, and of course one tomato, fresh thyme. And I have remaining here a bit of the thyme, a bit of the tomatoes and our bell peppers. These are to put in the end just so we have that vibrant look right through. And we have those looking translucent. We're going to go in with our Frankfurt that you know what I say? Half teaspoon of that garlic puree. Put in the garlic when you have enough ingredients so it doesn't burn. I'm just going to find a spot and toss that in. So we get all those flavors going. So we'll let that saute for about a minute or two just to get some color on our vegetables and to get some caramelization going on those frankfurters, right? I'm gonna hit this with one and a half teaspoon of all-purpose seasoning. Quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna go in with three tablespoons of my tomato ketchup. And then we're gonna simmer that down with one cup of water. On medium heat, gonna cover that and allow it to simmer for about seven to eight minutes or until we get a reduction in this liquid to a nice thick gravy after which I'll show you what it looks like in the meantime we're gonna work on those leftover yams and dumplings so forward let me show you what I've won so this is what overnight 
while they look like original way no filter nothing we not take off we are sure the real way right and we dumpling so this has been in the fridge for two nights it's better that way trust me you know what i say the dumpling man then we have the yam over here so same way what we're gonna do now we're gonna get that out of the water that we cook these in wash them off real nice and then we cut into them so for the provisions i wash them and I got them cut into half, right? You just cut those into two nicely. Same thing for your dumpling. So unfortunately, my battery died while I was doing this tutorial and I thought it was recording, right? So how I cut the dumpling, these are already cut. But how I did it was you don't put the dumpling down on the board like that because that way you'll damage the shape of it. You put it down flat and you run your knife like this. You find the center of the dumpling and you take your time, you run a knife, holding it firm in place, and you run a knife like that along to get that even cut, and you open it up like that, right? When it comes on to the yam now, you can put it down like this because the yam is a bit firmer. So you can put it down on the board like that, find the center again, and you run that knife because it is firmer. And you just cut, I'm not gonna do this entirely, so I, I thought that was recording as I said before. You just run a knife down like that. Right? And to get your yam. So I'm just trimming it basically to show you what how you get the yams cut. It won't disfigure the yam, it will keep its shape, right? So that's how you get those cut. And it's real quick and easy. Overnight dumping settings, man. Trust me, nothing not so nice so. Because these are wet, you don't want to cause a spill when you're frying them. So what you're gonna do, you get a lint-free clean rag or if you have paper towel. In my case, I don't have any paper towel. So I'm gonna go in with a clean rag. And you just pat dry those, right? So pat dry them nicely. And repeat the same thing for our yam and put them in a separate dry container. We have our oil heating up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we're just gonna go in and fry these nice and dry. It's gonna go straight in with our yam. And you realize we don't have all that messy action going on because we pat dry those. We have about a quarter cup of oil because we're shallow frying them, you know what I'm saying? So we keep that on medium high just to get it nice and crisp. So these are nice and crispy just the way I like them. I like my yams crunchy, right? I'm gonna put that onto some grease paper or if you have yourself paper towel, that's even better. I like more crisp on it, so I'm gonna go darker on that side. These can take up to two to three minutes to fry. It depends on how crispy you like it. But remember, these are food that has already been cooked. And to bring the flavor out in our yam, we're going to hit that with a bit of salt. Dumplings are nice and crisp, just the way I want them. Just going to remove those. These have been simmering nice and slow, you know what I'm saying? Gonna add into that the remainder of our fresh vegetables. We got the flavor from the first set, and we just want to fresh things up a bit. Turn up our heat to medium high for one minute just to get that bubbling, you know what I'm saying? And after which, you're good to go. And there you have it, Jamaican Rashafi 
breakfast ideas made easy here on more stand cooking it now on a Sunday afternoon you know my father the man you know, on a cool here you know we may have to make some sour sap juice some peanut punch or some carrot juice so without further delay forward let me show you how I'm going So the first thing you want to do is to cut each carrot into about three pieces, all right? So now that these are cut up, it's time for me to add this in my oyster juicer. Twelve ounces of that juice, natural. You feel me? I say. So you see all this good stuff right here. We're not gonna throw this out. Stay tuned for the next video, and you'll see exactly what I use the remainder of the carrot to make. So the first thing we're gonna add to our extracted carrot juice is some vanilla bean paste, and this is 100% stronger than the vanilla extract. This is coming straight from the vanilla bean, so you know this is very flavorful. We only need half teaspoon. And I'm gonna show you precisely what it looks like. That's what the vanilla bean looks like. Mix that out. And half teaspoon of grated nutmeg. Quarter teaspoon of cinnamon powder, and of course, real nephew white rum, man. And this is a 63% alcohol content, so you want to be careful with this. White rum, half it in our thing. Done. I'm just gonna go in with one ounce because we don't want to drink off nobody, you know. Guinness, and that's 4.2% alcohol. I'm gonna go in with half cup of that Guinness. You know the thing, go man. Supply chain is a Jamaican Caribbean thing, you know what I say? And for those overseas who may not be able to get the supply chain, you can substitute this for nutriment. I'm gonna go in with one box of this supply chain, which is 250 milliliters, which is equivalent to a cup. And last but not least, some condensed milk. I'm going to go in with half a cup and that will give me the exact taste that I'm looking for. And we just mix all of that together. So for the best taste, chill in your fridge for an up to an hour before serving. Or you can serve that over crushed ice. So this Oster juicer gives me the perfect blend of juice without any residue left behind. I didn't even have to strain this and if you want to know how to get that purchase, don't worry yourself. I'll link those below so you can check those out at your convenience. This comes like dessert in its own right. So if you love carrot juice, you know my name, Hot Chef. Drop a bag of flame in the comment and say, oh! Mm. Why? May I tell you? I kick off that white rum. Guineas, of course. Just call me the Guineas and the white rum if I go get the kids. I just give them the regular carrot juice. In another video, I'll show you how I get that done. And there you have it how to prepare the real Jamaican carrot juice. Wow, wow, wow.
go on, what's great? Chef here, John Morris again, man, presenting to you. Alright, alright, but I record something for you. Huh? I record a video, I can't talk. If you have shush me, how oh, I go record? Huh? Alright, I'm not going to make much noise, yeah? Love you. Daddy. Love you. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Alright, go and go watch cartoon later. I make some nice creme brulee for me and you and the fans in here. You want creme brulee? Yeah. Eh? This. I'm presenting to you how to make creme brulee. Now creme brulee is a classic in most restaurants across the world. And this is quite simple to make with very few ingredients. And you can add whichever filling of your liking to personalize this creme brulee. So without further delay, Forward, let me show you what I'm going on. So to start the creme brulee, the first thing you need is some 35% whipping cream and ensure it's whipping cream and we're going to add that straight into our saucepan. So directly to that, I'm going to add some Madagascar vanilla bean paste. So it's basically the same thing as the vanilla bean but it's the paste. It's a bit more expensive than vanilla extract because this is the original vanilla but I guarantee you it's worth it. So that's what the paste look like. We're gonna add that directly into our cream. We're gonna leave that to slowly warm up on number three and I'll take you back to show you what it looks like later on. So I'm gonna go in with four egg yolks. Just break those. Or another way you can do this, you break the egg, put it in between your fingers and you do this and let the egg white slide through your fingers. So that's another simple way of getting the egg yolk from the white. You just go back and forth and there you go. But to set this aside, we can use this to make ourselves some lovely egg white omelets. So as soon as this skin starts to form, that's an indication that your cream is ready to turn off. Because we don't want to boil it, we just want to get it heated. And we're gonna go in with our egg yolks granulated sugar and you don't want to let that sit because it will start to clump the egg up you don't want to go ahead and whisk this vigorously until everything comes back so while you're whisking this you want to set your oven to preheat at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to put some water on to boil because you're going to need that later on so this is what your mixture should look like you see how thick that is that's what you want and we're just going to temp that with a little bit so we just temp the eggs, mix that in. So we'll get all of that egg incorporated and it doesn't curdle. We're just gonna go in with the rest. Now your strainer comes into play and you just scrape all of that foam off the top. Because if you don't, this will cause your creme blade to be foamy on the top. So you want a nice smooth mixture. And this is what your mixture should look like after you're through. We're gonna pour this out right into a measuring cup, a baking tray of your preference, and our six ounce ramekins. You're just gonna go straight in with the mixture. Ensure to fold it all the way up. There you have it. We have four perfectly portioned ramekins to fill it. Now we're gonna go in with some hot water. So we get that water almost to the top of the ramekin so that water bath helps to cook them evenly right throughout so they all will be ready at the same time so we're gonna cook these on 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 to 40 minutes and then after which I'll show you what it looks like so forward throw your work go on so I just removed them from the oven and this is what they look like. You want them to be a bit jiggly, just like that. You remove them from that water bath over onto a cooling rack. I'm gonna allow these to cool down for about 10 minutes on the rack. Now I'm gonna pop these in the fridge and let them cool down for two hours in the fridge. After which, I'll show you how we finish them off. We'll be right back. So the creme brulee has been resting in the fridge for two hours just to firm up a bit. So you saw the process where we had it baked to remove it from that water bath and then we put it to cool for 10 minutes on our cooling rack and it has been sitting in our fridge for over two hours. So now it's nice and firm. So the next step you want to do is to get some sugar. Just going to go in with one spoon 
right on top just kind of rotate it like this to get the edges and we use the back of the spoon we just spread that across evenly let's get a piece of paper towel and you wipe down the edge just so when you start to caramelize the sugar it doesn't look messy around the edge so here i have my creme brulee torch however if you do not possess one of these you can also put your creme brulee in the oven on broil for about a minute and a half but you have to watch it as soon as it gets that nice golden color then you'd remove it from the oven so it doesn't burn I'm going to show you the color that you should achieve so if you have a creme brulee torch that would be even better keep your hands above it I'm just going to rotate our hands just so we don't stay in one spot and burn the sugar we want to get that caramelized nicely now we're going to allow this to coagulate for about two to three minutes and it's going to form a glass consistency on top that's perfectly fine that's how it should be gonna wait until it's dry and I'll tap into it and show you what the custard looks like listen to this that's what you want so we're just gonna tap into that so it's like a glass break that right you just dip your spoon and scoop your serving so there look at that custard beautiful Walk out, everybody does a look for me With me steam fish and oak her body Wagwan, wagwan, what's great? Chef here, John Morris again, man Presenting to you Father's Day Dinner Special Yeah, 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 yeah mm. What would they know? Mm. What would they jam here? Blue skies We are going to buy fish What we are going to do with that? Make some mad dish no. You know the saying, you know Steam fish and okra must bring something so here you are, for the non-existing fathers, don't go out on a rampage and go overpopulate the nation. Just go out with precaution, got a steam fisher, you know that something they're going on. Steam fish and okra business. It's <laughs> that a normal setting. A lot of requests have been made for this fish and I feel it fit to release this on Father's Day. Why? Because I love steam fish, crackers, okra and all these good things. And I know a lot of fathers out there will appreciate you mothers making them this meal for their Father's Day. Treat him like a king. As they are. You know what I say? You don't know the things that when you come on to Mother's Day. Take your own but take your own ladies and wall year on, you know. So you know how that's something they go. But today, a our day. A our time we shine. We're not so perfect, but we're worth it. So make we a steam fish with the okra, crackers, and some potato in them. Yeah. But we don't further delay still. Forward, let me show you what I'm going. These are perfectly normal. I have a video out on where I show you how to descale and clean your fish. And I told you, if you see the eyes looking white like this, when you buy it in the store, it's not good. However, these are like this because I washed it in vinegar and water. And the vinegar tends to have that effect on them, whereas it changes the color. But these are perfectly normal, right? But if you get them directly from the store, the eyes are looking like this, chances are you're not good. And you also check for a firm to the touch flesh. You know what I'm saying? So you know it's good. If you press it like that and your finger bursts through the flesh, it's getting rotten. One tablespoon of all-purpose seasoning. Half teaspoon of salt pepper mix. One teaspoon of onion powder. And one teaspoon of garlic powder. We just want to season like within the belly of the fish and the head. Careful of the bones, just gently rub that seasoning in. Get in those creases. We're gonna start off the steam fish with some fresh ripe tomatoes and we're using half here. You're also gonna need at least four ounces 
of rich yellow pumpkin or if you have squash you can use that as well and of course no steam fish is a steam fish without okra so you need at least unlimited okra to your liking right and of course bell peppers i have here red and green and i use about half bell pepper in total right one small carrot so i have here half corn on the cup and i cut those in half you cannot make a steam fish without white onions and the star of the show you know the thing go scotch bonnet man scotch bonnet and that i will give the thing the real flavor and of course nothing cannot be completed without maris and time in it Duh. so you know the thing go over here now we're gonna make this a one pot meal for the dads so what we go with we go ahead with some irish potato because this is a one pot meal for that special father's day over here steam fish can't complete if you're not crackers they're not going to tell you say, no all the jamaicans know say without crackers in a steam fish a joke dish i'm going to season off that to taste with a little bit of fish seasoning this is total optional but i find it give it a kick all right so we're going to kick start the steam fish by first adding into our pot three cups of water then to that I'm going to add my Irish potatoes which has already been peeled, washed and cut. So you add the pumpkin and the Irish potato first hand. And I have here six stalks of thyme, right? I'm just going to use half the amount. I'm going to use half teaspoon of butter, right? One teaspoon of that powder in. one slice of that scotch bonnet pepper because steam fish have is spicy though so we need that butter to melt and give us that nice creamy flavor and as well as that essence from our thyme and our scotch bonnet peppers right and we're gonna boil these potatoes and pumpkin because those are the ones that take the longest to cook cover this on medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes So we're down 15 minutes in cooking and as you can see we get that reduction in our liquid and your potato cut like that. You don't want them cooking any more than this because remember you're going to add the fish in now right? Make room for the kingdom man. Proper red snapper. So I don't like to cut the tails off my fish because when you're presenting it on a dish it looks way better with the tails on. However, get every other aspect of it trimmed. We're gonna now go in with our corns. They don't take very long to cook unless you're getting some real tough corns. However, these are nice and soft, you see me? So put those in, bring comfort to the king, you know what I say? We're gonna go in with our onions now. So you put these ingredients last because you don't want to boil out the onion and your stuff in the liquid. You want them to give it that proper end flavor. And then we're gonna go in with our carrots. Carrots, as you know it, can be eaten raw. So, we put these in and fish takes seven to 12 minutes to cook. Not even, depending on the size. So, and the carrots, it's gonna slow cook. We're not gonna boil it, so we're gonna steam it nicely. Reduce that liquid, flavorful broth, right? Put the rest of that thyme in there. Okra in. So we're gonna put half the amount, just the same for okra because the okra tend to change color and we want you to identify every ingredient that we use at the very end so what we're going to leave for last we're going to leave half the amount of the okra and we're going to leave the bell peppers and tomatoes i went in with half teaspoon of butter at the beginning so we're going in one and a half teaspoon now the butter just give it a nice velvety texture and a nice flavor so in with that fish tea seasoning so in total, we use two tablespoons of that fish seasoning. So we're just gonna cover this up and allow it to steam 
for 10 to 15 minutes on medium low heat after which I'll show you what it looks like steam fish and okra body man 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 and reaching down to that reduction stage let's get some of that pour it over the fish five minutes before the alarm goes off they add your tomatoes peppers in and our remaining okra I don't like when my sauce is runny, right? So one teaspoon of cornstarch to two teaspoons of water. And we'll just mix that out. Put a bit here. As you pour, you mix. So it doesn't get long. So one spot right there. You come back over here. Another spot. So we're not overdoing it. And you make, you make it to your liking. However thick you like it, right? And that way the sauce coats the veggies and the fish way better. As I said, this is totally optional. You just want to move your fish around so that it doesn't stick to your pot, right? And to finish off, the crackers. I just put those in the last two minutes or There you have it. How to prepare steam fish here on Morris Time Cooking Ed. Once again, thank you very much for watching. And do remember to hit that subscribe button for more amazing videos like these. Until next time, happy Father's Day to all the real and true fathers out there. Father figures alike, even if you're not a dad, we play that role in society, big up yourself. Because guess what, we have to nurture the youth them, you know. Don't get them all run left them. Take care of the youth them. Safe travel on the gravel and go and big up on yourself.